there, Hofstra fans. Welcome to this week's edition of the W Mason Coaches Report, right here on GoHofstra.com. I'm Mike Sullivan. Joined, as always, this week by head coach of the Hofstra Men's Lacrosse Program, Seth Tierney. Coach, is everything going? Hey, Mike. Thanks for having us. Penn State over the weekend on the road, your regular season finale, a difficult one. You fall 8-7. to seven. Take me through the contest. What did you see from your team? Yeah, just, uh, you know, congrats to Penn State. Uh, we just... We had some things happen to us that were a little uncharacteristic, and uh, we didn't come out with the victory. And it, you know, it stings. Um, you know, we didn't put our best foot forward. And any time that that happens, you always have a little regret uh, of what could have been. So uh, again, we did not play our best game. Um, it, you know, it was a long bus ride home. Uh, with that being said, you know, in the first 14 games, uh, we were 10 and four, and we got to uh, we got to learn what we. Uh, what happened to us in those four losses, and uh, use that as motivation as we head into the uh, the first round of the CAA tournament. Take me through the start of the game where Penn State really jumped on you. Yeah, why was your team a little bit slow out of the game? Yeah, I, you know, I, it's a good question. I don't know if I have the the exact answer. You know, um, they, we got we got beat by two Dodgers, which again is a little uncharacteristic of not having a slide ready to go, um, and uh, you know that, that knocked us back on the heels. We get it back to two two. <laughs> we have an offensive possession uh, to make it 3-2, and we never got we never got a chance. Uh, we got chances. We were never able to take advantage of those opportunities to tilt the tables in our direction a little bit. And uh, you know they had our number facing off in the first half. Then Chris Clark did a great great job adjusting in the uh, in the second half. Um, but we just uh, we you know we fell on we fell short there. It seemed like you had a few missed opportunities, especially on the offensive end. Defensively, what did you see from the Nittany Lions in terms of their ability to contain your offense and limit you to seven goals? Yeah, I mean, uh, we had a couple of shots that we we, we certainly could have buried. We we had a, a bunch of shots knocked down by players before it got to the goal. Again, uh, whatever I don't know what the cliche is, but you know, it just wasn't it, it wasn't happening for us. And we needed we needed a spark, and we just didn't get that spark. And, uh, and and hopefully we learn that lesson. But uh, you know, uh, you know, again, we only, we only let up eight goals, uh, a couple of mishaps defensively. Even with eight goals, we got to score more than seven goals to win a lacrosse game at this point in the year. You mentioned your team through this season. Your ten and four regular season is complete. Heading to the CEA mm -hmm. tournament, this is where you want it to be. You're number one in the conference, regular season champs. Looking back, what are your thoughts on the season overall, and what can you do to improve this week? Yeah, I mean, listen, if, if someone said, you know, in the beginning of the year that you're going to be ten and four. And you're going to be the number one seed. You sign on the dotted line, you know, mm -hmm. to, to do that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to focus on the four losses. Uh, you know, four losses. I think by six goals, and uh, you know, two of the, the first two games. Um, you know, one game versus St. John's. We, you know, we had opportunities to win that one. We were without Sam and, and John Reichter, and now now this one where we just didn't put our best foot forward. So yes, ten and four. <laughs> Looking back, you know, I would, I would hope it could be a little bit better, um, but we've got to take what we've learned from those four losses and get back to what 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 took us in those ten wins and uh, kind of just learn from it, um, cut it loose, and uh, everybody's zero and zero on Wednesday. Let's talk about Wednesday. Delaware's coming in. You beat them early in the season, eleven to nine, but they're coming off one of their best, if not their best, performances of the year, and a fifteen-seven win over UMass to get themselves into the tournament. What do you remember about this team from when you played them in March and take me through the scouting report? Yeah, I mean, listen, they are, uh, Delaware is Delaware. Uh, every year and year in and year out, they have big, strong athletes. They play in your face lacrosse. It is a, you know, a CAA type game uh, without question. And, uh, and we've got to be sharp. We've got to be able to, uh, to move our feet, clear passing lanes. We've got to be able to get to the goal offensively. Um, we've got to go hard at the goal. Uh, they're a physical team, you know, they're active with their sticks, um, you know, the face-off game is going to be vital, uh, time of possession, having the ball, and uh, and offensively they got guys that are, are big and strong that could <coughs> get to the goal, excuse me, and, and let it go, and they did a they did a, uh, a really nice job against UMass. Now, this is a roster, it's young to begin with, but in terms of postseason experience, there doesn't, there isn't a lot there. So take me through this week in terms of a coaching perspective to get them ready for the postseason and understand what the moment will feel like on Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, listen, we're gonna, we're obviously the hype and the, the media and things like that. We'll, we'll take care of that. But we, it's a lacrosse game. That whistle blows. It is a 60-minute lacrosse game, four quarters, you know, 12 five-minute games, and we just gotta win the first five minutes and then take it on to the next five minutes. So with that being said, everybody's just gotta do their job. Nobody's looking for anybody to do more than what they're capable of doing and what 
let, you know, be great at what your job is, and don't be good because you're trying to do someone else's job or to do a little bit more. Just be great at what, what you do individually, and in turn, our team will be, will be fine. Starting off with Wednesday, what's the key to get the win? The ground balls and face offs, well, let's start it right from the whistle. Uh, offensively, we got to have more than, than one or two guys that can get to the goal, and uh, we got to be able to handle their zone. They've been playing some zone lately. They zoned up Penn State a bunch, and uh, we got to make sure we get off to a good start. Defensively, we got to know their strengths. We got to know what they do. Um, and, and Coach Understein and Coach Gorman are working on that right now. Coach Brazel, you know, we're working on, uh, on, on zone. Uh, we did have uh, some success versus their zone earlier. But the game earlier, this, that was our first CAA game, and it feels like two and a half years ago. I mean, it was a long time ago. Each team was different. Um, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes on Wednesday, but uh, we'll be excited to play on Wednesday night. Finally, Coach, what would it mean to you at the end of this week to potentially playing for that CAA championship and to walk away with the CAA crown? Yeah, I mean, we can't win the CAA championship this week on Wednesday, but we, uh, we certainly could put ourselves in a position to do so. Uh, that's that. That would be that, that's another another goal on our on our checklist for 2014. One was to get into the CA tournament. You know, two was to be the number one seed or to play a home game at least on Wednesday, and we've accomplished that. So now we got to throw that piece of paper away, and the next piece of paper says, you know, let's uh, let, let's play in a champion CA championship game. The Osterfried men's lacrosse team get back to work Wednesday in the CEA semifinals here at home against Delaware. You catch all the action right here on GoHosher.com. For head coach Seth Kearney, I'm Mike Sullivan. Thanks for tuning in to the W. Mason Coaches Report.